Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, we're yeah, ready we're to go. go. Yeah, um, my modem was connecting. It's running at a blazing 28.8 kpps. <laughs> I may have to, if I cut off the video, just, just so you know what, what's going on, okay? Um, welcome everyone. I'm gonna call this um, public school board meeting to order. Um, we're all, are we all ready? Yes. And um, just a moment here. I'm looking at what's going on. Sorry. Okay. All right. So we call this meeting to order. Board members, does anyone want to volunteer an invocation at this time? I'll be doing that, Chairman Soto. Thank you, Mr. Booth. Please proceed. All right, if everybody here will bow with me. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I ask tonight, as always, that you give the men and women charged with leading this school district your guidance and direction. Lord, I ask uh, tonight that you lay your healing hand on those in our community that have been affected by this virus, uh, not only physically, Lord, but also mentally and financially. And finally tonight, Lord, I ask that uh, you bless the graduates of 2020. It's been a tough time for them, a terrible situation that they've had to go through and a change in the norm. Uh, but I ask that you will continue to walk with them uh, as they start their life as young adults, um, not just in Osceola County, but all around the country. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Thank you, Mr. Please, please rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's do it. Uh, there's Pledge one allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, of America. And to, the to the republic, republic for which it stands, which stands one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and for, justice all. for all. Thacker. The missing statement. Any volunteer? I'll volunteer, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Osceola County School um, mission statement is inspiring all learners to reach their highest potential as responsible, productive citizens. Thank you, Ms. Castillo. Um, positive comments. Uh, I'll start with you, Ms. Castillo, your district one. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I just want to um, acknowledge Sarah Graber today for helping me through some of the, the the long list of questions that I sent her to prepare myself for this meeting today. As always, she was amazing and uh, broke down some really important information for me. So hats off, Sarah. Hey, Terry, I'm going to defer my positive comment and just sprinkle them in throughout the meeting. Uh, next, I'll call on District 3. Uh, Mr. Weissire, any positive comment? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. I'm laughing at your sprinkling them in throughout the meeting, so I apologize. <laughs> um, I, I want to just echo uh, what Mr. Booth had uh, said regarding our graduates. Um, I want to say congratulations to uh, the graduates of the Osceola School District. We know, as he said, that it's um, a challenging time to go through, and it comes with a certain degree of disappointment that some of those normal um, moments that we all look forward to as young adults and young students uh, maybe won't be happening in a traditional format. Uh, but I also want to say how proud I know we are, not I, but we are, of the graduates of 2020. And uh, we're proud of the great work that they've accomplished throughout their educational journey, uh, their focus in the last quarter in navigating the difficulties of COVID-19, and our optimism for their future. And so, um, with that, we're looking forward to great things. I want to also just express gratitude uh, to the staff across the district that continues to uh, adapt and evolve in, um, and do everything they can, honestly, to provide quality education to the students of our community. Um, we know that real leadership is revealed in how we respond in difficult times. And um, we've certainly been dealing with difficult times, not just in our community, but across the country, but across the state when it comes to education and delivery thereof. And um, I'm just once again encouraged and thankful for the people we have in this district that choose every day to invest in the lives of young people, and I'm grateful for them. So that'll be all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Weissire. 
District 4, Mr. Thacker. Uh, Mr. Weisar pretty much stole everything I was going to say there, so I completely concur with everything he said. Uh, I hope everybody, as we move into the summer, has a great summer, uh, continues to stay safe and takes care of themselves and their families. And uh, again, congratulations to all the graduates. Very sorry it's not traditional, but it's not traditional time. So, and all of our teachers uh, and staff who did a great job of uh, teaching through this. Thank you very much. We do appreciate it. I know it's it's been challenging, so thank you. And last but not least, well, Mr. Booth, and then. I was going to say, did he just call me least? Uh, no, it'll be Dr. Uh, Booth will be the last and least, not least. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, well Mr. Chairman, Chairman, I do uh, thank, thank you for turning it over to me, to me and and. You know, not a whole lot to add. I did want to say, you know, thank you to the teachers. I know firsthand how difficult it's been um, doing a lot of this distance teaching. So thank you to all of you. Wanted a special uh, thank you personally to Dana and Heather and the communications department uh, for helping me out to get some messages out to the community that I felt have been very important. Uh, to thanking our teachers and, and congratulating our graduates. Uh, so thank you. And just wanted to share this. Only uh, reason I wore this. My sister found it cleaning out my childhood home the other day, and it's my graduation ring from 1996 at St. Cloud High School, and I thought it was a great time to, to just bring it in and wear it. So, again, congratulations to the 2020 graduates. Uh, you got your whole lives ahead of you. Um, and, 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 and don't forget, we'll be seeing you in July, hopefully. Mr. Booth, class of 96, you look a lot older than you actually yeah, are. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. I just congratulate you for finding a finger to fit that on. <laughs> Dr. Pace. I had to put it on the pinky. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Chairman Soto, thank you very much for the opportunity again to, to just say thank you to the amazing people across this community who've rallied around in recent weeks to celebrate the great work of our teachers, to celebrate our amazing graduates with the class of 2020. Also do want to echo the thoughts about Dana Schaefer and our community relations team. They have been rock stars in helping to communicate how important and valued our teachers are and how excited we are for the class of 2020 moving forward. Uh, this is the last week of classes for our seniors. They will finish up on Friday. Uh, parents, this is catch up time. Any assignments they may have missed this quarter, let's really get those grades in good shape. Remember that your final transcripts do count as you move on out into the world. I also wanted to take just a moment to report that Osceola County Schools is the most improved district in the state for FAFSA completion. That is the financial aid form that we encourage all of our seniors to fill out each year because that's a real good sign that they have got our GOT College message and are moving on. And I also want to congratulate Mr. Ott and the team at PATHS. PATHS is the top most improved small school small high school in the state, and then to Mr. Phelps and Joanna Santiago and the amazing team at Tehopakaliga High School, they are the most improved for a large high school across our state. So great work's been done even in difficult times, and I just couldn't be more proud and can't wait to uh, celebrate with our graduates in July one way or another. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pace. And a quick sprinkle, I'll say that, yes, we're going through very confusing and stressful times, but um, Dr. Pace, seriously, I don't know how anyone would, would, would think that way or could get that idea from the way that the district has been carrying on. Um, if anything, I believe that the work that you're doing and your leadership and the school district and this board is really projecting a lot of confidence. And, um, and I know we still have a lot of work ahead of us. So let's just keep that going. We, um, Going on now to public comments and Dr. Pace, I want to defer to you on this on, on, on how we're gonna do this one today. Yes, sir, we did receive one public comment most recently. It is the letter that was sent to the school board members and also to me and our school board council yesterday from our friends at Cigna. So I will start the timer and we will read for three minutes and then any other remaining comments will be a part of our public record. First and foremost, I hope that you and the school district staff are safe and doing as well as can be expected during these unprecedented times. On behalf of Cigna Health and Life Insurance Company, 
I would like to express our concerns that the school district of Osceola County has decided to present to the school board a new plan administrator, Aether Health LLC, to service its employee health benefits starting October the 1st, 2020. We also understand that this is under that under this new solution, SDOC will contract with Evolutions Healthcare Systems Inc. to build a healthcare provider network, even though Cigna Solution already provides SDOC with a robust network of contracted doctors and hospitals. Our concerns with moving forward are as follows. Number one, Aether Health LLC appears to lack the public sector experience to deliver on the service expectations of SDOC, that they currently only service 32 employer clients representing 10,000 employees, compared to Cygnus public sector model, which encompasses over 2.9 million employees. Evolutions Health Healthcare Systems, Inc. will be attempting to build a new network in the midst of a national health crisis when the provider community is already under its own extreme pressure which is only going to create unnecessary accessibility issues and additional costs for your employees. Number three, finally, we do not understand how SDOC is moving forward with a directly negotiated agreement when state law and SDOC's procurement policies both require competitive procurement. Please consider the following issues for discussion during your workshop and possible vote on these directly negotiated contracts. According to the workshop presentation, Evolutions claims it will build a provider network for SDOC with three distinct tiers, each having different employee out-of-pocket costs. Such an effort will assuredly lead to provider disruption and higher out-of-pocket costs for the SDOC employees. We reviewed the top providers currently being used by SDOC's employees today and compared them to Evolution's provider directory and found that only three of the top 25 facilities currently being utilized under Cygnus Network were in the Evolution's directory as tier one, which could result in 88% of facility care deriving higher out-of-pocket costs if members want to seek care at their current hospitals. Only six of the top 17 primary care physicians currently being utilized under Cygnus Network were in the Evolutions Directory as Tier 1, which could result in 65% of primary care deriving higher out-of-pocket costs if members want to see their current PCP. Only 16 of the top 67 specialists currently being utilized under Cygnus Network were in the Evolutions Directory as Tier 1, with 10 others included in the directory but without a designated tier, which could result in 61% of specialty care deriving higher out-of-pocket costs if members want to see their existing specialists. Even with a three-tier plan design, if these top utilized providers are not contracted into Tier 1 or 2, SDOC employees that continue to see their current providers will be subject to potential surprise medical bills for the remaining balance after SDOC pays the reference-based or fixed price for the service. Please also note, and that would be the end of the three minutes, sir. The remainder of the public comment will become a part of our public record and our posted minutes. Okay, so this brings us to agenda modifications. I'll start with District 1. I don't have any, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I do not have any. Moving on to District 3, modifications? No, sir, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, District 4, any modification? I'm okay. You, District 5, any modifications? No, sir, I have none. Thank you. All right, so therefore, we don't have any modifications to this consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? I move for, to approve the uh, agenda uh, as it is with the approval of the consent agenda. Very second. well. A second. Uh, seeing no hands for discussion, we'll take a vote. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 I registered five votes. Vote passes 5-0. And it brings us to the next, um, the next item coming down is information. I believe that this is for, this is included in our board packet, which is the monthly business advisory meeting information and information on Avant Garde Academy. Uh, Dr. Pace, can I ask you to provide some, some, um, some background on 10.02? Yes, sir. This is the, for the board's information. The board of Avant Garde Academy voted in de in December to suspend or or sacrifice or give up their contract agreement with the school district at the end of this current school year. And this is provided for documentation um, minutes from their board meeting for for the board's information. No action is necessary. Thank you. All right. So that brings us to our regular agenda. 11.01 .01 is the approval of the application for Victory Charter School. Um, board, what is your pleasure? 
Dr. Pace, can you provide us with some information on, on 11.01? Uh, yes, sir. Victory Charter uh, submitted an application for a new K-5 elementary school that would open in August of 2020. Uh, we are recommending a five-year um, approval for this particular one, of course, subject to performance and financial sustainability as they um, work through the educational experience for, for students in our community. Thank you, Dr. Pace. Board, do you have any questions, concern? I see um, Mr. Weissire has his hands up. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Dr. Pace, do we know where they would intend to open the school? Yes, sir. It would be in the same building that's currently occupied on OBT by Avant Garde, um, the K-8 school that's giving up its charter. So is the K-8 just going to the K-5? It's two totally separate entities, two totally different boards, and they would have their own um, MSID okay. number. Okay. Thank you. So just so I track with this then, so avant-garde OBT surrenders their contract effective at the end of this school year. That portion of the building then becomes vacant. This charter wants to open and has applied for a totally different school, totally different MSID number. And then they're going to intend to lease that space back from the real estate holder and operate the school there. It's actually Avant Garde PH. It was originally the one that was operating out of the Pleasant Hill site. They moved this past year to the OBT site when Osceola Science moved out of that building so that you've had the 612 Avant Garde site, which has another year on its contract. You've had the K8 on that site, they've given up the K-8 charter and this is a new application from a different board um, to operate a K-5 in that space. All right, so we um, we may continue debating on this item or we could take action. We have a motion to approve or to not approve either way. I'll make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Booth. Any board member that wants to make a second? I'll second and ask some additional questions. Very well. Um, you have the floor, Mr. Weissire. Dr. Pace, I'm sure um, you, you and your team have vetted this and are recommending it so you're comfortable. Um, any, any thoughts, comments um, regarding the school, what you envision with them, any concerns? Are they set up to be successful out of the gate, you think? I mean, just give me a little bit of comfort around what you've seen. Sure, the application was vetted by our teaching and learning team, um, as all charter school applications are. We have had the opportunity to work with the Victor Victory um, Management Company this year as they were operating the avant-garde schools. I've been pleased with their leadership, with their investment in, in the curriculum and technology so that they have provided a, a stronger educational experience for students. Um, also, they have a better plan for financial sustainability uh, with their enrollment pieces in place. So, um, you know, I feel like uh, they have been well vetted and at this point in time, it would be the staff's recommendation to approve the application. And so, if, if I follow this, then um, Avant Garde hired Victory to be their management company. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And then um, the avant garde piece goes away, but victory will still be in place as the management company for this new charter school. But yet the people, the parts, the players are separate and apart, or they're similar, but just by a new name or. Similar people, but different boards, different entities, um, a new application. Mr. Weisher, could I add something on that? Um, Dr. Pace had me, uh, uh look into this on, uh. April 20th, I received a letter from um, Todd Hepker, uh, uh, who is an attorney for MRBK Osceola Development. If you recall, Todd was the attorney for Trade Logistics, the aviation school. Apparently, uh, Avant Garde at their old location, the K-8, is being sued for an excess of 1.25 million for rent and damages, et cetera. In it, he accuses uh, the school system of uh, 
um, basically conspiring with avant-garde and the two victory schools to violate Florida law regarding charter schools and avant-garde's charter agreement. And basically, I think, looks for us not to approve this because of this lawsuit. Um, first of all, you're doing what you are statutorily required to do as it relates to this charter application. It has been represented to Dr. Pace by the people in the board and to me by the attorney for uh, victory that contrary to what's been asserted in the letter, none of the property or monies from avant-garde K-8 are being used in victory, meaning they didn't steal the property of the old charter school and move it over here. Um, it's my recommendation, I'm putting it on the record to the board that uh, for a long discussion Dr. Pace and I had, I conferred with their general counsel and said, okay, here's, and did a letter, here's what is going to be the case. The recommendation is going to be to approve this. Our board will approve it. But should a court determine that what you have represented to us is not true, that you owe this money, we will be coming back to the board immediately one, to look at whether you're not financially stable and terminating you, or two, did you misrepresent in the inducement of this charter and revoking it? So I just want the record clear for the applicant, for the public, for everybody, that the staff did their due diligence. It's just my legal position. We don't get dragged into civil lawsuits and, and and I don't think if we went to the state, they'd look at us and say, on what basis are you, I mean, you can't say no because there's a lawsuit. Nobody's ruled yet. So uh, we'll keep you advised, we're gonna monitor it. Um, but when you talked about concerns, that was the only concern and we ran it down and the answers we've been given are, are satisfy us. Now, if they've misrepresented, we're gonna be back here at the table telling you. <laughs> and getting it dealt with. Thank you. I'm going to call the hands. I believe Mr. Thacker's hand, then I'm going to go with um, Castillo, Ms. Castillo and Mr. Booth. Clarence, you have the floor. Yeah, I just have a question on this application. Um, what are they uh, offering at this charter school, which would be unique or different that, uh, that we are not offering? Um. I apologize, Mr. Mr. Thacker. I don't have the evaluation in, in front of me today. Um, as as you know, many of our charter schools are are operating very much the same kinds of things that we are. Um, I can tell you that Victory has invested in the curriculum and is dedicated to having quality instruction. Um, they are looking at STEM as well as technology as a part of their focus. Um, but beyond that, I would have to have to provide you additional information at a later date. I apologize. I'll go with Ms. Castillo. Thank you. Uh, this question is more for our, our attorney. Um, can you just for the record tell us what it is that we are required to do by statute when it comes to approving a charter? Because you, you made a point of stating that we have done our due diligence based on statute. And then also second part of that question is, um, what, are what are the chances, the chances that, that we approve this charter? We find out that there that something is a mess, and then we have to come back to the board and decide whether or not to revoke that charter. What are the chances that that can be done, just based on all the different steps that we typically have to take? I think you would be within your statutory right to revoke. In the in the event that happened, they can then appeal within the applicable time frames to the state. Um, basically. In a layman's nutshell, you're required to superintendents to look at it and decide it is financially sound, it's academically sound, it's got a proper accountable board put in place, and it's it's very broad in that sense. Mm -hmm. And a denial is basically has to be a substantive with the state, like we found out 
it's six pedophiles <laughs> trying to create it type. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, but it's that, that broader, broader review and Dr. Pace goes through the whole checklist with her people to make sure we've done that. Yes. And then from there, I don't have the statute right in front of me or I'd go through it with you, but it, we've yes, gone through that checklist. She does it. It's done on every charter that's brought before you by her staff. Yeah, I just wanted that to be stated, not so much yeah. for me, but yeah. for the record. Um, Dr. Pace, did I miss anything? Those are the, the big things are financial and academic. Correct. And and if I may, Chairman, uh, I did learn that the K-5 school is slated to have a health and wellness focus in the coming year and also a focus on leadership with the Marzano Academy. Those were the things that they had um, yeah. listed in their application as being unique. All right. Mr. Booth? Yeah. You know, uh, we go through this a lot and we make these show votes, I call them, uh, certainly to approve these charters because we know what the next step would be to go to the state and get an easy approval. I, I just wish that there was some way that communities could create a system where everybody comes together at the election time and votes for people that might show up at a public Leadership meeting. And, help and then the, uh, your, your mic's on still over there, so be careful. Um, I just wish that the community could come together, elect some folks to maybe maybe on like a, a board that would oversee schools, and then that money would come in publicly, and then we would publicly use it to educate the children, and it would be transparent to all of the citizens of that community. I wish we could do something like that, then maybe we could get away from this um, where we have uh, – Misuse of public fun funds uh, by private companies uh, in the in this sector. I, I, that's I just wanted to make that comment. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Booth. I share your wishes. Um, so we do have anybody else. I see some hands. Are those for real, or you just forgot to put them down? Ms. Castillo, I didn't put mine down. Ms. Castillo. No, I, I didn't put my hand on. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. All right, but here's but here's where we're at. We do have a motion to approve, and we do have a second, which was called with discussion, Mr. Booth and Mr. Weissire, and we've had discussion. Please pause for just a moment to see if there's anything else that this board wants to talk about or any other questions before I call it for a vote. All right, so it looks like we're ready to take a vote on this. So having a first, a, a, a motion to approve with a second. Um, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor, please state aye. Aye. All those opposed, state no. No. Uh, all right. So I registered two aye, Ricky Booth and Calvin Soto. And I registered three nays, Ms. Castillo, Mr. Thacker, and Mr. Weissire. Mr. No. Soto, I, I did not. I did not vote no. I, I voted with Mr. Booth. Okay, that's why, thank you. That's why I did what I did. All right, so I registered three eyes with Mr. Booth, Ms. Castillo, Mr. Soto, and two names with Mr. Weissner and Mr. Thacker. It, is the record correct? Okay. Then let the record reflect. Go on to the next item. Mr. Chairman, could I just ask the board members that going forward, if in the future we have a charter school recommendation and any board member knows their Based upon everything they've read and the, uh, they're going to vote no, if you could alert me ahead of time, I'd like to give you a legal basis for your voting no, so that if we are challenged and the vote ends up no, we've got a record that I can defend. I can give you my reasoning right now. Well, I know you could. I'm just saying, in, uh, 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 but I'll <laughs> get it was written in, out. Which was my question that I asked. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. Ms. Castillo, your hands are up. Yeah, I apologize. I know the vote is over, but I just need to make sure that for the record, I, I state that I voted yes, because we have met our obligation and I know what will happen if we vote down the starter school. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just stating that for the record. I, I'm going to make a comment on this just, just to indulge myself as Ms. Castillo has done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sutherland. I, I do. I, I, That's one of your sprinkles. I just, I just want to say is that I that I know what that that I shared a frustration with Mr. Booth. I've been serving on a school district for almost eight years now. And 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 that is that I really do wish we had a little bit more controls as to 
how a private school can open up and call itself a charter in, in a district and all of a sudden um, operate with our funds and our students. But I do understand the charter school law very, very well. And, um, and quite frankly, no pun intended, but our attorney, Frank, did explain that it's very broad. And so I, I understand that. I also feel that, um, you know, the superintendent is making a, a recommendation. Um, I feel like a lot of the due diligence, a lot of the work, a lot of the questions that I would have had have already been addressed. And so, you know, when it comes to these things, I do just give a lot of deference to Dr. Pace and her team when she says, hey, I want you guys to approve this. Ultimately, you know, she is very, she's responsible for these students as much as we are. And that's all I had on that, uh, on that item. Mr. Soto, could I say one more thing, if you don't mind? Sure. Oh, absolutely. Um, certainly didn't want to i want to make sure that the community knows and and everyone knows we have some very good charter schools in the community uh and certainly uh, i think we uh, obviously have some great ones in the community um but you open yourself up for things um like this when you funnel this directly into some into some private companies and, and don't have the oversight that we have here publicly so and i know look there's some secondhand oversight i get it but uh just want to make that clear that that's really my my concern here is that we, I hear about this happening all over the state all the time and it you know would love to to see some some uh, laws put into place that, that that make that a little better that's it uh, Ms. Castillo did you have a final word okay so I'd like to make a motion and to approve 13.04 yes there is a motion on the floor there is a motion well, that was 12, wasn't it? On. Um, oh, I apologize. I apologize. I'm just, I jumped ahead. Mr. Mr. Uh, Thacker, I'll, I'll make a motion for number 12 and get us back on online. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> so we have a motion. Second that. We have a motion to approve on the regular human. Point oh one. Item 12.01 by Mr. Uh, Booth and a second by Ms. Castillo. This is for the approval cooperative agreement with the Florida United Methodist Children's Home. Um, any discussion on this item board? Just waiting for the hands and I see none, therefore I'm gonna call the vote. Um, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Um, against? Okay, so I did register five votes aye. Vote passes five zero. Brings us to the next item, which is on the regular 13 business and finance. It's three items that can be um, 13 is 12, right? Now, <laughs> now it, now it I'd like to make a motion to approve <laughs> point 0.04. Point 0.04 exactly. is the, the motion to approve all from 13.01, and 03. We have a motion to approve. Chairman. Thacker, second by the Weissire. Yes, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the one thing had been gnawing about me on this all last, last week, and I kept trying to figure it out, and I figured it out. I just would like... <laughs> The maker and the second and the board to authorize me to include in our contracts language that's basically no more compensation commissions, consideration or financial remuneration may be received by the contractor, its employees, or agents from any third party for the services performed on behalf behalf of the school board. Basically, I don't want to find out that one of the people you're relying on is getting money back from one of the people that they're telling us to use. We ran into that. So that's the gist of the language. If you'd let me play with that Understood. and put that in there. I would, have, I, would, yes. I would amend my motion to include that in all three agreements. And, and I'm sorry. I, I, I we had discussed it. Or I forgot it was. Banging it. And, <laughs> yep. Okay. So with that. I guess with, I don't know what to call those, maybe formal amendments. Amendments, yes. Um, no, you're just approving it with that, with that, that modification for me to clean that language up. Okay. Then with those modifications, we still have a motion by Mr. Thacker and a second by Mr. Weissar, am I correct? Yes. All right, and I'm waiting for hands. I do see your hand, Mr. Weissire, so I'll call on that before we take a vote. Thank you. Um, I just want to comment and, and 
people have heard me say this throughout this process over the last couple of years um, and sitting throughout our workshops and some of the things that I mentioned before. Um, this board has always prided itself on uh, building positive working relationships uh, within our community, as has our superintendent, and that has been the uh, the tone and approach that we've taken continually. Um, I've, I'm voting to approve these contracts tonight, number one, because it's the manifestation of the work and effort that this board and our staff and our team have been bringing together for us over the last couple of years as we've we've set out to undertake a robust process of reshaping how we will control costs and provide quality for uh, the employees and their families that we care for. Um, I want to also state what I've said multiple times. Um, from where I sit, anybody and everybody is welcome to participate with us um, if they're willing to understand the framework that this board has laid out on how it is that we want to go about um, framing our healthcare services for those that depend on us. Um, and so I, I know I don't speak for the board in my comments, although some board members may or may not agree with me on this, um, but I think it's very important that um, our employees know that this is a bold step by the board to do everything we can to care for them, to curb rising cost, and to provide quality care at an affordable cost to the taxpayers and to the district of Osceola County, while at the same time recognizing that as is noted even in the name evolutions, that this is an evolving process that will continue to uh, take on a new look and a new feel as it continues to roll out across our district. And I look forward to um, partners across our district um, at all different levels coming to us and saying, we recognize what you've done. Uh, we value the uh, role and the decision that you guys have made to be intentional about your work on behalf of the taxpayers and your employees. And we want to partner with you in a true partnership to ensure that we can uh, take part in providing this quality care. Um, I applaud the board and I applaud, applaud the, the superintendent, Sarah, Frank, and our team that's worked to try to pull all these pieces and parts together. Um, this to me is the culmination of a couple years of conversation and work to get us here. And uh, although I, I regret that, that we've had to go through some of the, the challenges we've had to get here, and I wish that hadn't been the case, um, I move forward with a degree of optimism uh, with regard to what we're doing, but also I move forward with a degree of hope that uh, partners, stakeholders, and um, uh, partners within the community will begin to come together and work with us in, in a new way. So thank you. Um, Mr. Thacker, you have the floor. Uh, I just second everything Mr. Weishar just said, but I especially wanted to thank uh, Sarah and Lauren and Frank and Dr. Mm -hmm. Pace who have gone through uh, great pain to get us to this point with these agreements. And uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Constance and Carl and uh, Barry and Ashley, and especially Kenneth, who puts his heart and soul into making sure that our employees are getting the absolute best that we can get. Um, Kenneth, people don't understand the work that Kenneth has done to help us with this, and uh, it's way above and beyond, and it uh, means a great deal to me, and uh, it will be a great benefit to our employees, which they'll probably never realize that it was him that helped push some of this. So uh, I appreciate that, and uh, it's been kind of a struggle to get here, but I'm glad we're getting here. Indeed. Um, I don't see any other hands. I'll pause before taking the vote. All right, seeing nothing else, um, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor to approve item 13.04, please state aye. 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 All those against, say no. Hearing none, the vote passed 5 0. Takes us to the next item, <coughs> which is um, <coughs> 14 regular facilities. We have 14.01 and 14.02. 14.03 would this would be for approval of both 14.01 and. Mr. Two. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve 14.03. Second. And we have a motion to approve 14.03 by Mr. Booth, second by Ms. Castillo. Board, are there any um, questions, discussion, or comment on 
either either of these two 14.01 or 14.02 items. I don't see any hands. Therefore, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Again, state no. Seeing none, vote passes 5-0. The next item on the agenda is attorney attorney comments. Mr. Kumbacher, you have the floor, no comment. Superintendent update in 16.01. No comments, sir. Unfinished business. Board? Seeing none, new business. I did not mention it when we did the modifications, but I did want to discuss a little bit, and I believe the superintendent as well, to discuss a little bit about, well, there's two things. Number one is that we're, we have to, we have a new school year coming up in August 10th. Okay, mm -hmm. how that's gonna look like it's hard to determine with the information that we have right now. Okay, so what is what I believe is probably going to happen is is that we're going to be first. We have to be we have to be surveilling what's going on, and there's so much information coming in, and we have to pay attention to it. We need to read it. We need to discuss it with folks that are experts about what's going on, and there's just so many different. There's so many different issues when it comes to a school district. So I came across an article from the, that a, um, an interview with the president of the National School Board Association, and I shared it with you all. Um, did anyone have an opportunity to read it? I did. Yes. I read it. All right. So so look, I, I I mean, there's so much in it, but I guess what I really I guess what what really stood out to me. From that article is because you know in three pages it, it explains just really I, I just can't think of I cannot think of an organization that has an impact on a community in so many different ways in a school district. Um, and then when we're talking about dealing with a pandemic you know and we know of what we know about so many questions that come up and and um and I understand that the that the superintendent has has called up to create a a, a, a back to school task force. I think that's a great that's a great idea. That's a that's very important function um, with with people from so many different stakeholders, including medical doctors, that can you know help you know understand and translate some of the the scientific data that's coming out. But board. When we're looking at opening schools in August 10th, people want to know what we're going to do as soon as possible. And yet, we got to keep telling them that, look, you know, we're, we're working on it. Here's, here's one of the biggest questions that I want to leave you with. And by the way, I really didn't, you'll have all the opportunity to respond to the article if you read it, if you want to discuss it. But the, real, the, the, the most important question is, is social distancing even possible? And um, and that's really and that's really where we need to 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 resolve because if we say that it is, then we need to start allocating the resources and the plans to come up with that vision and be able to implement it. So with that, I will go ahead and I'll call. Um, I don't know whose hands was up first, but Ms. Castillo, I'll start with you. Well, was the superintendent going to respond? Is, is that the second hand that's up? Because I no, that's Mr. No. Okay. Oh, well then forget it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. My my it's it's more Please. of a a comment. I know the answer to this question because uh, Dr. Pace, you and I have discussed this before, but I actually coincidentally had a parent text me like about right before the meeting started regarding who is on the task force. Uh, so can you walk us through how the task force was selected and who is on the task force is going to help us to um, usher in the new year with these new, I guess, rules of the game? No, that's a good question. Dr. Pace, 
Yes, the um, the Osceola back to task for back to school task force met for the first time this afternoon. We have two medical professionals, doctors from Nemours Children's Hospital, who volunteered to work with us on that particular group. Mr. Phelps and Amanda Kraft, our district registered nurse, are leading that group and coordinating the discussion. We have a principal from all three levels: elementary, middle, and high. We have two parents who have children in multiple uh, grade bands. So we have uh, elementary, middle and high school parent interests represented as well. And then we have our two, uh, both the current president and the incoming president of uh, the teachers union, OCEA, are working with that particular committee to really look at what back to school would look like. And in speaking with Mr. Phelps briefly before the meeting, a lot of today's discussion really emphasized how important it was going to be that we communicate our plans carefully and strategically, that we use the data and science and medical guidance to guide those plans, because we're gonna have to go a long way to restore confidence for both our employees and our students that we're absolutely determined to do everything that we can to keep them all safe at school, on the way to school, to feed feed them and, and nurture them and all of those other things. Um, I, I don't think that we're prepared to make a decision today for what back to school on August the 10th looks like. In my best estimation, we'll be looking at op at alternatives. Um, perhaps we have face to face instruction for some and we offer a digital option for others. Um, again, that requires professional development for teachers. We had to jump right in and, and develop a digital learning plan for this end of the school year in just a week and a half. You know, and part of that was over spring break when I had to call people back into work to get that plan going. And, and I think our team's done a tremendous job, but we know it's not working for every child. It, it can't work for every child and it doesn't work for every home where technology may be limited, where moms and dads are going to be going back to work and need a place for their students to go. And kids need to interact with each other in a way that's that's normal and and that there is that personal connection, both with their teacher, with their peers um, as they grow and develop. So. Don't have specific answers today. That's who's on the task force. We will be putting out communication through our community, community relations team to help keep our parents and, and community involved. We're also doing a district call out today um, to talk to parents about end of the school year and and what we're thinking about doing for August. So we're just going to have to continue to communicate and and ask for people's patience as we work through this, as we wait for some additional guidance and and more importantly, see what the data does in our community as we start to open things up and what what me measures we can put into place to help keep everybody safe when we return. Thank you. I'm especially uh, glad to know that there are medical professionals that are on the task force as well as parents. Um, I think it's important for our parents to be able to have a voice in this matter as well. So thank you so much. Um, Mr. Booth, your hands are uh, number one question that I have received over the past uh, two to three weeks uh, by far is school going to open on time? When's school going to open? When's school going to open? Uh, uh, so, and, and the answer is, you know, look, there's a lot of people involved in that decision. I mean, it, and really, ultimately, probably the governor uh, will, will have to, you know, uh, make a statement about what he and his staff want to do and what the Florida Department of Education wants to do. Uh, and certainly, um, but but I guess my thoughts, by the way, the article was great. It essentially, um, it was uh, a gentle, several gentlemen from the National School Board Association um, just kind of thinking out loud about the, the same questions we all have, which is what it, what's our budget going to look like financially? What's social distancing look like at a school? What's transportation going to look like? What all these questions that we're uh, trying to ask. Uh, two things that I want to add. I think we owe it to our community to work as hard as we can to try to get school opened up in August. I, I really think we've got to work hard. And, and again, I'm, I'm, I wanna see this, the science and the data and how, how does everything look? We don't know for sure what August look, is gonna look like right now, but I think we owe it to our community to work towards opening school in August. I, I think we do. Our community needs, you know, our community needs kids on the basketball court and kids in the football field and kids in classrooms and teachers teaching. And, and we need that as a community. Um, you know, I understand that, that things might look different as we approach, but we've got to work uh, extremely hard to try to get that done. Uh, and I want to say one thing about the task force. It's, it's, I'm, I think it's great. We have medical professionals on there and we're certainly um, going to really take those recommendations uh, to heart. But ultimately, it's our decision as a school board. It's no task force decision. A task force can make all the recommendations in the world. The five of us 
are going to have to make uh, with Dr. Pace, but ultimately the five of us are going to have to make that decision. And I don't take that responsibility lightly. Um, so I appreciate all the work that the staff is doing, but I want the community to understand task force or no task force, the school board will make this decision and, uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll make the right one. Absolutely, uh, Mr. Booth. I, um, I do look forward to what their contributions could, could be to help us make that decision. Um, you know, but, but I agree with you. We're not going to, at least, at least I, I look, if I hear you correctly is that you're going to also do your own diligence. Um, like I have been and the other board members have been, um, we need to take everything that everything that's possible, everything that's available to us out there. Um, in order to, 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 to do what's best for this community. I, I, um, I hear you on that. Let me, um, Mr. Weisheyer, may I call with Dr. Pace first? Actually, mine will be really fast. Oh, okay. Mine is simply to just affirm everything that Mr. Booth said and that I agree with him 100% and his tone and his approach was right on point. Very well. Dr. Pace. Thank you. I wanted to add briefly that the uh, two doctors who are on the task force are infectious disease specialists. So we're very excited about that. We also have a transportation representative, a school nutrition representative, uh, someone from the athletic department, and also somebody from safety and security to make sure that the team is well balanced and really looking at this from a wide angle. But, but I certainly share the board's commitment that opening school is a tremendous step forward in terms of getting back to normalcy for our community. It's important for the business world. It's important for our kids. It's important for our parents. And we're dedicated to doing that one way or the other in August. But we just have to make sure that we have the plans in place that I can recommend to you as a board to do it safely. So thank you for your support. Thank you, Dr. Pace. Um, so before I move on, I'll pause for just a moment for any um, anything else. Um, Mr. Thacker, you're good? I'm good. All right, and Ms. Castillo? Okay. Yes, thank you. Right. So, so just that you are forewarned, um, I am going to bring up this topic at the end of every board meeting. It could be a one minute thing, it could be a five minute thing, but I really don't want, I really hope that we're not silent while all this thing are going on. Let us let us share our thoughts. You know, and, um, this is the best way that we could do it. I, and I really do want to hear from you. Um, you know, and your experiences during all of this, Mr. Booth. Final word. Additional comment that's not on this topic. So whenever right. I call the board member, yes, so fine. Yes. you have the floor, sir. Mentioned some folks early on positive comments and I just wanted to make sure that yes the teachers have been working with us we all understand that but there's a group of folks around here who are on this technology uh, and all these 12 month employees that Dr. Pace has asked to come in and work and I know we thank them for their work coming in here every day but not getting to stay at home I mean, I can't imagine hey, Rick. Not being on the tech team right now. You're not on. Oh, I'm not on the whole time. I'm not on. No, look at the red light on your USB. Is this not connected? Now, can you hear me? I can now through the. Testing one, yeah. testing two. You should have stopped me earlier, so I'm gonna. I'll, I'll make this brief and, and I'll, I'll articulate better the second time around. Wanted to thank the 12-month employees. Wanted to thank the tech uh, employees. I, I kind of forgot to do that up front. Thank you guys. Uh, I know you didn't get to stay and work at home. You had to come in here every day, and so we appreciate you and thank you. And and I, what I was uh, finishing with was that I, I can't imagine what it would be like. I think that the tech folks probably had the hardest job here finishing up school with distance learning and distance teaching so thank you thank you thank you to those folks that was it mr chairman very good sprinkles um <laughs> <laughs> that was my last sprinkle, <laughs> last sprinkle mr. Booth. 
All right, so the only thing left is board member comments. Mr. Booth just made his. Anyone else? I see no other hands. Uh, with that, then um, I thank everyone for making this happen. Please be good and stay safe. Until the next, take care, guys. Thank you.